Now, 7 News continues with High School Red Zone. The Powdersville Patriots number three in the SC Prep Football Media Poll this week, trying to get a win in their home opener and start out 4-0 for a second straight season. Elijah Huggins, he's emerging as one of the stars for Thomas Muster's pass. That was a 10-yard run, made it 7-3 Powdersville against their county rival Pendleton. Then Eli Hudgens, who's got all kinds of targets to throw to. How about a little 70-yard QB scamper? Gets into the end zone, 14-3. Drake Sloan, they can dump it off to him, and he can do stuff like that. Hard hit at the end, Powdersville, 4-0. They roll on to the victory. They've won 16 of their past 17. They win handily against Pendleton. Welcome back to the show. Well, the St. Joe's Knights found themselves number one in the 1A rankings of that media poll in the Palmetto State this week. Tough task, though, having to go to Seneca, which was also 3-0 like the Knights. Walker Wood to Chris Johnson put St. Joe's up 31-20 in the third quarter. What was a back-and-forth game? Back-and-forth like this. Cody Long the block. Tyler Iverson recovering for Seneca. Into the end zone he goes. 35-31 Bobcats in their home field. But Walker Wood, what a night. This a 68-yard run. That made it 45-35. And St. Joe's with a 4-0 start for the first time since 2019. And a huge win on the road for the top team in 1A. Chris Goodman's crew celebrating a 10-point win. They're a relentless bunch. Uh, resiliency is all I've got for them. They knew how big this game was being a 3 18. We're trying to take the next step, and our boys took the next step today. We just found our rhythm of offense, and you know, ever since then, I mean, everyone was hyped up. Everyone had a lot of energy. We just we knew we'd come out with the win. And holding Seneca to 35 points is actually an accomplishment because they've been rolling up the numbers. Huge, huge win for St. Joe's, a program that began within the past 15 years, one of the biggest in their history, I think, tonight, winning on the road at a 3A. Not far from there in the golden corner, Hart County made the trek across the border, taking on Daniel. First ever meeting in the series, and the Lions trying to extend the state's active longest winning streak. Blake Simons and Jalen Brown Wallace, 38 yards on that connection. Eli Merck gets his hands on the ball a bunch, having one of the great careers ever for a receiver at Daniel High. That includes the late great Terry Smith and a guy named New Hopkins, among others, who played there. That touchdown helped Daniel extend the lead. Lions roll on to the victory, 27 straight for Jeff Brewster's team. A triumph against Hard County. Clinton trying to get to 4-0 for a second straight season playing down at Aikland. Austin Copeland's turning into a nice dual-purpose quarterback. Finds Caden Crawford for the 7-0 lead against the Hornets. And then look at the catch by Justin Copeland from Austin. Copeland goes up and pulls it in, and the Devils win again. They have back-to-back 4-0 starts for the first time since they were coached by the great Keith Richardson back in the mid-80s, 85-86. BHP trying to match last season's win total. They could do it with a win against Bradley Adams and Woodruff. Trying to make it four straight in the series as well. They led by six early third quarter. Kennard McLaughlin falling on the Woodruff fumble. Shaheem Robbs makes them pay and makes it a 27-14 game in favor of the Bears. Then A.J. Pendleton, who's had a nice start to his season, finding Eli Strickland kind of threading the needle right there. And BHP pulls away to the victory. So they got a couple of wins early against the 4A team. The night they went on the road against the 3A, 34-27 close outcome but a win for BHP. Union County was looking to go up 27 to nothing against Broome. They had a 20 nothing lead second quarter. Marquise Morgan a spectacular interception of Ben Black. That was late second quarter and then the offense got to work for the Centurions. Kamaje Brackett Brandon gets them close set up their first touchdown of the game. It was 20 to 7 at the half Union County third quarter. Jalen McGill for Broome cuts the Jackets lead to six but Marcus Porter Plays wide receiver out of the Wildcat. Look at the speed by him. Ran past three defenders, eventually dragged down. Set up Jakevious Jenkins, a 26-14 lead. And Union County makes it five in the past six against Broome. They hang on for a 32-27 win. Abbeville continuing a rugged schedule. Haven't played some tough folks so far and going on the road tonight against a West Side team. Coming off that big win against Hannah Cutter Woods is feeling it in his first year in Scott Early's system to Jamison Wilson for the touchdown, a 15-yard score and a 7-0 Rams lead. Then after a defensive stop, Woods and Jamar Boston get together. 14-0 West Side. Abbeville is a drive stall. West Side's Jamaze Bowie and Jamal Marshall coming up with a blocked field goal attempt. So they deny Abbeville points there. Woods and Josh Williams get together. And Westside, after they're upset at home by BHP, 
getting another nice win. This one over a good Abbeville team, 31 to 20. Greenwood seeking a first win on the year, trying to avoid an 0-4 start for the first time since 1996. Fourth down stop against the Yellow Jackets of North Augusta. Then Jeterius Gary looking to get some hard yards. The lights went out at this game. They had a delay, but Greenwood pulls it out on the road. First win of the season to get to 1-3. Chapman also looking for a first victory. Their last 0-4 start was 0-8 against an 0-3 Lawrence team, trying to avoid its first 0-4 start since 0-9. Noah Mosley with the sack for the Raiders, and James Rawl to Jameer Darden. That sets up a roll to Jay Pulley. Touchdown connection. Oh, what a catch it was. 7-0 lead. Tight game all the way through. Chapman pulls it out. They able to get it in overtime as Chapman gets the win by a final of 24-21. Elsewhere, Christchurch and Riverside doing battle at the reservation. Couple of teams looking for a second win. Third all-time meeting in the series. And Woods Wyndham to Jackson Rep. On the 53-yard connection in the second quarter, Cavaliers had a 28-14 lead at the break. Riverside trying to come back. And the deep ball for Zion Culbertson. Nice grab there, but Christchurch pulls it out. Big win on the road. Riverside back-to-back seven-point losses the previous two weeks, and they fall in another one-possession game tonight. Meanwhile, Southside and Wahala at the home of the Razorbacks. Each picked up their first win of the season last week. No score in the opening quarter. Following a south side interception, big Bryce Payne get out of his way. Two point conversion was good. Hogs had the eight nothing lead. Payne then little jump pass. Dylan McCurry, he's going to take it to the house. Show you the final as Wahala rolls a double up south side 50 to 25. Coming up, Wade Hampton trying to do something its program hadn't accomplished in a while. We'll let you know what that is and if they pull it off as the high school red zone rolls on.